Your Royal Highness, my Lord, ladies and gentlemen, it's an amazing honor for me to be invited to speak here today, not only because as a foreigner I'm allowed in your beautiful palace, but also to be in the presence of Your Royal Highness, who for anyone who works in the space of sustainability is an absolute hero, so thank you for all your work. Uh, your forum today is discussing the role of finance and accounting in future-proofing our economy. Uh, in my talk, I will look at this from a slightly broader perspective. What is the role of business in making the world a sustainable place? And when you talk about sustainability, it's often a room full of converted people that you're talking to, but in the accounting space, that might not be there yet. So let me give you a bit of an overview. Sustainability is not new. Um, Forty years ago, the Club of Rome produced a book called The Limits to Growth, which was basically the first warning that we were entering a period in which the world would be running short on resources. Twenty years ago, the United Nations organized the first Earth Summit in Rio, and in that meeting, the document called Agenda 21 was published. And you'll be amazed if you take the trouble to download that document and read it, how up-to-date the challenges described in there still are. The only issue with the document is that all these challenges have become a lot more urgent. Only a few months ago, 55,000 people met in Rio again for Rio plus 20. I was one of them, and we all agreed the document called The Future We Want. And only last week, some of you might have read about it this weekend in the newspapers, the world met again in Doha, to talk about climate change and an agreement to move forward on that. So in summary, the world has now been focusing on sustainability for about 40 years, so it's fair to ask the question, what progress are we making? And in all honesty, being Dutch and somewhat low on diplomatic skills, we're not making the progress the world needs. Poverty has not been eradicated. Inequity has grown, even so much that recently the London-based magazine The Economist said it's now beyond productive um, inequity. Hunger and malnutrition still kills a child every six seconds, which if you think about it, 18,000 children die each day from hunger while there is enough food in the world to feed them. 1.8 billion people do not have access to clean drinking water or sanitation. 2.3 billion people do not have access to electricity not to mention the now growing threats of climate change. Uh, the International Energy Agency recently warned that if we are building all the CO2 emitting installations that the world is planning to build, the world will warm by five degrees. Do you know that today the world is constructing 1,300 coal-fired power plants and no CCS is attached to any one of them? Only last week, the World Bank published a report that two degrees climate change negotiations is becoming a farce. We are moving to at least four degrees warming of the planet. And that is going to be a catastrophic risk for you, humanity. I represent WBCSD, or the World Business Council for Sustainable Development. And in 2010, that organization published a document called Vision 2050. In that document, the word sustainability was defined as a world in 2050 in which nine plus billion people will live. We want them to all live well, and together we should live within the boundaries of the planet. In that vision, in that document, it was foreseen that the period between 2010 and 2020 would be called the turbulent teens. So let me reflect on what is happening so far in the decade. The turbulent themes are now unfolding, and if you ask me, it's becoming a society-shaping, toxic mix of an economic crisis, of social unrest, and of severe weather events, which are just there. And all of this at a time in which trust in the public eye, in political leaders and business leaders, is lower than ever. The economic crisis in which we all are now started in 2008 with the financial crisis, but it's grown into a global economic problem. Uh, the austerity measures of governments, businesses holding back their investments, and low consumer trust is causing us difficulties. 
The social crisis is not talked about yet much today, but is severe as well. Whether it's the Arab Spring, whether it is youth unemployment in South Europe, whether it is the uprise in the South African mines, whether it is the energy policy debate in Japan in the upcoming elections this week. There is a growing social tension in our societies. And if we look at the weather patterns, that discussion has completely changed. It used to be a debate about scientific models being right or wrong. It is now just a report of the next catastrophe hitting the shores of our countries. And if you look at the vulnerability of our societies, whether it is the storm in Sandy or the floods here in the UK, it shows that our infrastructures are ill-prepared to deal with the upcoming issues. And the thing that has kept me awake most this year is a statistic about Greenland. As you may know, Greenland has been defrosting 100% for the first time this summer. And when ice defrosts, the structure of crystals changes, which you and I can see by ice be turning from white to dark gray and then melting water. So white ice reflects sunlight, dark ice absorbs it. Scientists have now calculated that this summer, so the summer just gone, Greenland has absorbed twice as much energy from the sun than the USA uses in one year. And this is the planet beginning to work against us. So you can see that the society in which we all live and operate is not getting an easier place to manage. We are on a path that is simply not sustainable and I would back to us, is this truly the future we want? In this vision, 2050, that WBCSD published, we have written that if we want to save the world, it is business that is going to provide the solutions. We'll have to take the lead. And since the majority of the audience today will be in business, this is a call upon you. But let me be very, very clear. We will not be able to make the world sustainable in an incremental change mode. These are not little baby steps that are gonna bring us home. It will require a radical transformation. And there are many solutions out there. Most of your companies will have CSR programs. Many of you will have pilot projects that show good examples of what to do. But what we have not worked out yet is how are we going to bring the solutions to scale? And of course, my statement is not that business has to save the world on its own. It can't. You need pu public policies that incentivize business to really put the right solutions into place. And therefore, working together with government in close cooperation will continue to be important. But business must take the lead. Business as usual is simply no longer an option if you want to get to a future-proofed or sustainable economy. And uh, I've noticed that too many business models and too many strategies in companies are simply dependent on the notion that current economic principles and capitalism are static. I would say that is naive. The conventional model for capitalism is found wanting in terms of the benefits to the majority of society, the impact on the planet, even in terms of continued economic prosperity. The call for change now rings out loud. Capitalism requires a new operating system, a reboot, if you want. Business needs to listen to what scientists are telling us. The link has not been made strong enough. So we must now incorporate the knowledge coming out of great concepts like the planetary boundary framework developed by the Stockholm Resilience Centers into setting the priorities for solutions. We must find or create a framework that will guide the solutions to the social tensions in society. So in a room full of CFOs, financiers, accountants, and other business people, a fair question would be, do you consider that current company reporting reflects the information that we need to make those decisions? Research suggests that many corporate reports describe sustainability as a journey with no explicit destination, and therefore we will never know whether we're on the right journey. Furthermore, the non-financial parts of the reporting are not rule-based. 
making comparability across sectors and within sectors completely impossible. In a future-proofed economy, the old adage of what gets measured gets managed would still apply. In Rio, like the Royal Highness said, I was quoted saying, the accountants will save the world. In simple terms, what do I mean with that statement? We need to ensure that reporting makes clear how a company is planning to make its money rather than just reporting how much money was made. That is going to be the big change. If we're going to bring solutions to the scale that the world needs, we must get all businesses involved. Said differently, we must change the rules of the game. In your profession, we must change the accounting rules. At this point in the speech, often people think I'm a communist and want to attack capitalism. But let me make very clear. I am a capitalist. A capitalist is somebody who puts capital to work and expects something in return. We call that the return on capital. Where the mistake in our system was made is that we only expect and manage a return on financial capital. In order to address the current crisis, we must also, in a systematic way, demand a return on social and natural capital. That's where the rules of the game will need to change. That's why we started a program on reporting and investing, and we will collaborate with A4S, with Teep for Nature, with the IIRC, and many of the other great initiatives started in this house to make sustainable performance by business concrete, measurable, comparable, and linked to scientific priorities. This will focus both on the internal reporting for risk management, for performance management, but also for external disclosure as a drive for a better valuation and eventually for a more appropriate allocation of capital in capital markets. <coughs> With all these changes in mind, I'm extremely delighted to announce that WBCSD will collaborate with A4S and um, the, the, in, in the program, the CFO forum that was just announced. We will also uh, discuss with A4S and the Cambridge University Program for Sustainability Leadership to collaborate in this program to train CFOs and other financial leaders in sustainability. If the world, but the world is such a abstract word, if you want to address the many challenges that the world faces, if business wants to restore the trust that society should have in it, business has got to become more transparent and acknowledge that externalities need to be valued, monetized, and factored into day-to-day -day management. And like I said, this is not incremental change. This is radical transformation in a time when time is running out. I don't think that's English, but <laughs> apologize. My good friend, Paul Polman, uh, one of the most visionary CEOs in the world, always ends his speech with a quote, which is, you may delay, but time will not. And lost time is never found again. I am not this eloquent in English, as I have made clear. So when I was looking for the definition of a radical transformation to happen in a short time, I had to pick up a dictionary to find the word that could best describe it, which I did. And the word is revolution. We need a revolution of capitalism, not with the objective to overthrow it, but to make it better, balanced for nature and for the people of this planet. You all can save the world, but we need revolution. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Royal Highness.